Hi guys, welcome to Captain German Exploring YouTube channel. I would like to introduce you Paul. Hi Paul. Hello. Nice to have you on board. <laughs> Thank on board. you for your yeah. hospitality. Paul now is a 23. 23, yeah, just one month ago. He's in a round the world trip and he already started and cross Atlantic Ocean. Let's uh, find out how it was in the beginning how it is now and what's the plan for future and of course we will show you he's a perfect baby perfect <laughs> bot <laughs> thanks yeah <laughs> nice so so nice to meet you <laughs> yeah nice to meet you too <laughs> tell me something about you okay i'm joking so come on <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I know uh, Paul decided to have around the world trip. Yeah, that's the dream or the, the plan or the, the goal I want to achieve. But right. you already start and uh, you started uh, quite a long time ago. Yeah, in this uh, January in uh, Portugal. Uh -huh. um, uh, I set sails with uh, two friends of mine across the Atlantic. And before that we worked, uh, or most of the time I worked uh, like nine months on the boat, get the boat ready. And um, yeah, so it's over a year now, one year and a half, maybe. Yeah. Okay, but how old are you now? <laughs> <laughs> a month ago I turned 23. 23. So, so 23. it looks like you start your project when you were at 21, more or less. Yeah. You bought boats? Yeah, I started working on the boat with 21. Probably. Mm -hmm. Or I turned 21. No, I turned 22 during the boat works, but I got the boat or made the decision to buy the boat with 20 around about, where I was still in my um, apprenticeship as a boat builder. Uh -huh. uh, where are you from? In Germany. In Germany. So, uh, the southern part of Germany, um, nearby Munich, and there are a few lakes where I grew up uh, sailing also on the lakes with my... So did you have experience before? I mean, like lake experience, doesn't yeah. matter, any sailing yeah. experience. So uh, when uh, we, uh, I was, or we lived in the capital of uh, Bavaria, so Munich, and big city in, uh, in Bavaria. But I know you, the Bavaria, uh, Germans consider uh, it is a separate area. Yeah, and Bavarians, exactly. uh, they think it's not a Germany. Yeah? I just remembered <laughs> when I said the capital of uh, Bavaria, like the uh, <laughs> Capital of Bavaria. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but is it true? Um, the the northern uh, the guys from northern Germany say so. I don't uh, feel myself uh, like uh, another part. Or another no, country. no, no, no. It's but, not uh, not about this one. So of course it is just like one country. But yeah. I mean inside the country when uh, I uh, met people before and ask where are you from? We are from Bavaria. From Germany? No, from Bavaria. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Separate we, we flag do, of Bavaria. We like, we like doing that jokes and uh, just to clarify that. <laughs> we are on the cool side. No, just joking. Um, no, I feel uh, not uh, like special only because I'm from Bavaria. Which age did you try uh, sailing first time? So the first time sailing alone was probably with uh, 14 on the lake. Mm -hmm. And then with 16, uh, after I uh, got the, the license you need uh, to charter a boat, I chartered a boat in uh, Croatia the first time mm -hmm. and went sailing with some friends in the Mediterranean there. Uh, who uh, brought you to the sailing? Did you do it by yourself or parents or friends? Yeah, my and... dad. Pro most likely my dad. Um, when we moved to the lake from the city of Munich, um, he started sharing uh, the cost of a boat with another guy, so he was allowed to use the boat and just uh, took me and my sisters um, to the boat and we got used to sailing and just developed step by step. At some point he uh, decided to get his own boat and um, then at one day I asked if I can uh, try it alone with some friends to bring the boat from the winter storage. You have to haul out the boat uh, like... Um, from where to where? every six uh, months um, from one end of the lake to the other. So uh, three hours of sailing. But maybe. it's not a lake sailing, it is a, a sea sailing. No, or it wasn't a lake. On the lake. lake, so it is a big lake and the yeah, and, uh, inside. Length, it's probably uh, 20 kilometers and in width, six. So, oh, okay, but it, it's like a, yeah, it's a medium size to big, like depending on how, how you want to compare it. Uh, when did you try first time uh, sea sailing? 
Um, we did some holidays with my parents where we went to the Mediterranean. That was pretty uh, young also with Maybe already with 12 years old, I was the first time on the sea, in the Mediterranean. But for myself alone, with uh, 14 on the charter boat, and then the first time on the Atlantic, now, after finishing it's the It's already on your yeah. own boat. Yeah. Okay, uh, why you decide to buy your own boat? Because you had experience just like sailing, maybe mm -hmm. I would consider that you uh, prefer to have some like Plateau 25 and to have a sailing on the lake and mm. uh, just live your uh, regular life. But you decide to have a boat and uh, to live in a uh, big water. Yeah, difficult to say how it uh, came like that, but um, I think it was, I loved sailing already. And uh, then uh, I got a book from my grand grandparents. Uh -huh. And it was about a German sailor who sailed around the world 45 years ago, Rollo Gepard. And I was in inspired by the adventures or the, the life at sea at this time. So what he explained in his book, how it is to go somewhere to places you can only reach by boat, like the St. Blas Islands. But it is a more romantic, it's, it's not more yeah. realistic. So you are I more was, romantic. Nah, it was, it was <laughs> there were also the realistic stories. Like it's, it's shit weather, you're just fighting against the waves, but it's adventure. And I like the adventure. So um, kind of a dream build up uh, in my head that I want to do it uh, as well. And somehow I was thinking, I don't want to wait until I'm retired. Would, yeah, maybe it's a- uh, It is it's some options a, in yeah. between, I will yeah. tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't knew. I learned a lot uh, what options uh, there are to, to live on a boat or to do uh, boat travels now since I started. But when I began, I didn't have that much of an idea what's yes. possible. So, but uh, what's the difference between you thought about and the reality right now? Is it totally different or it is uh, just, you know, just adjustments of your dreams? Uh, I didn't expect it that it can sometimes be so hard finding uh, solutions uh, that you have to fix your boat really like. But it's a, a sailing. Lot. It's about mechanics job. Yeah. It's not about yeah. wind job. You know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's really a lot of uh, boat work. Um, I still like the boat work, but I didn't expect it to be that much time consuming, money consuming. Um, but also, I uh, have to say, I didn't uh, expect it to be so nice. Um, seeing all the different countries and meeting all the different people and uh, just having a really nice time and I learned so incredible much in this uh, one and a half years I left uh, Germany so so you thought before it is just limits is more narrow so yeah. it is a just advantages and disadvantages it's more closer than yeah. now so now yeah. advantages is much much higher than yeah. you expected but disadvantages is the same uh, lower than you expected yeah, yeah. Well, there, there are some disadvantages I didn't uh, knew before, um, but still the advantages are much higher, I would say. But Otherwise, which... I wouldn't uh, be here anymore. Yes, of course. Yeah. But uh, which knowledge did you have before uh, you start? I mean, like mechanical, because mm. uh, what should be taken care of all the time, non-stop. Yeah. And uh, you have to have some experience. Mm. I mean, at least even theoretical experience yeah. and uh, yeah. how it works. So uh, when I grew up with sailing, I was uh, always interested in how the things work in the sailing. So uh, I knew how, to, how things should work on a boat. And then after high school, I decided to do an apprenticeship um, as a boat builder. And that uh, was three and a half years where I worked in a boat yard on uh, glass fiber boats, wooden boats, and we did repairs and restoration works. Um, but also a part of this time was uh, time in school where we had all the theory behind the uh, practical stuff. Ah, so you, you quite experienced it. I mean, in terms of mechanical job, because of fiberglass yeah. and the wooden job and uh, yeah. with the sailing as well. So yeah. you just, when you decide to, to do, you already were pr prepared for it mentally, I mean, at really? least. <laughs> yeah, really, I think the apprenticeship really uh, taught me a lot about boats and about the life. Just, uh, I have to say that, that uh, I think without it, I, I wouldn't be here where I am now. Um, so, yeah, yeah. 
and just prepared somehow. How you decide to buy a boat? Because it is a just, you know, it is a time and money con consuming big hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything just disappears into the boat. Yes, yes, yeah. just yeah. throw money in it and it, you see it burning inside, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't knew about all of that. That's so, <laughs> so that is all so big and so hungry. Yeah, I just didn't knew how I, I I knew I want to do it at some point. And um, then during the apprenticeship, the the dream I call it the dream just grew again. And um, I looked in the internet for some uh, used boats, and then suddenly this boat popped up for quite cheap and um, it had a history so the pre-owner said around the world also so it's that boat already ah okay so that boat's already, ah, okay. so that already circumnavigated boat right. okay right. nice <laughs> yeah um, so i thought okay that might be a solid boat that uh, can take the adventure from the books i read um this time they had those boats so i had the thinking okay this old uh, tough boats that's uh, the boat to take um and it was cheap, so I thought I'd make a good deal buying the boat and then some paint here and there and the, the job will be done. It wasn't like this. I expected three months of work. It ended up uh, being nine months. Uh, three nine months, months, it's not a big time. It's not like... No, uh, but it ended up being uh, nine months. Okay, yes, um, you expected three of, months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, really every day, almost every day, six days a week, probably eight to nine hours. Um, and then, uh, yeah, as you say, just daily it continues uh, that you have to do things on the boat. Where did you buy this boat? In Portugal. And you fixed it in Portugal right. as well? Yeah. Uh, what was the price of it? Nine and a half thousand. And uh, within nine months, uh, the total cost? Uh, I spent uh, like the same amount, if not even minimum. Uh, more for minimum, the I would say. things. And then uh, you start uh, talking with people and you you start thinking about hmm, maybe I should just have waited a little bit more and then bought a boat more expensive but having the time to earn the money. Um, but I would say uh, buying the a low budget, low budget, still a lot of money um, boat. I could uh, borrow the money within the family with nine and a half thousand. Okay, it's possible to get the money. Uh -huh. uh, with 20 or 30,000, I think it's not possible. Oh, my family wouldn't be possible. Um, and then I had something I had a goal to work for. So in the last year of my apprenticeship, I had uh, more than one extra job. And in holidays, I worked on the Oktoberfest and stuff uh, to earn money for the repairs. Uh -huh. And um, so without that, still, if you buy a more expensive boat, a bigger boat, when you want to start, you always want to change something and you yes, spend and money. Yes, and it is just yeah. double, yeah. double size. It's just more yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. Because for bigger boats, stuff you buy, like yeah. you need bigger and it costs... Uh, more, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so you just... Uh, it's oh, rain, yes. it's coming. It's gonna be uh, like right now. Yeah, yeah, maybe we, see, we have to close the hand. We see the rain, you know, it's coming <laughs> just straight. Okay, let's continue. You, Never and, mind. And we can hear the rain as well. We can yeah. hear and uh, see, yeah. We should uh, like start the rain catch up. Meters away, I think. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. Do okay. We, do you catch the water? Well, I just so suit the the yeah. rain catcher. But they came from Marina season. right now, so yeah, we have full tanks now. <laughs> um, Maybe we have time. to run away. Yeah. Run away. We can go inside. Okay, let's go inside. Yeah. <laughs> See you in a while. Rain. You have a quite big cockpit. Yeah. So uh, if it's not raining, I can stand here outside. Or when I'm staying on the floor and not on the benches, I can also stand here. Things. Normally, what is, uh, what, what is it? It's a just locker or the, this compartment? Yeah, it's just uh, because I have no lockers uh, where to put wet things. I have a little thing where I put the uh, diving stuff nice. inside. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, here usually uh, the main sheet is attached. Ah, so okay. yes, I don't yes, have yes. I don't have a traveler, but. Um, but yeah. you have the same system like in our boat, so it, is, yeah. it works exactly yeah. the same. So yeah. we have uh, just put it outside and that's it. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's go inside. Okay. Whoop. Look okay. at this. Yeah. Bubble for the for the watch it. Uh -huh. Yeah. No. No. 
we have to, we put it pretty uh, strong so that uh, it doesn't uh, cut the fingers. Uh huh. Oh. Yeah. And must keep on it. Hello. <laughs> uh. Yeah. In a stormy weather, it is a very convenient, huh? Yeah, when you don't have to bang your head, it's uh, hopefully uh, nice. We had some stormy weather, but uh, never like I have to lock the boat and get everything uh, like a uh, submarine. But um. <laughs> <laughs> submarine boat. Yeah. The entrance is quite sharp, you know. You need to yeah. just. When I got the boat, it was uh, until here, so it wasn't that steep. Uh -huh, but it is a more efficient in terms of space. Uh, space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So also from here, it was close to here, so it, I had yeah, to yeah, find. You can stay. I had to find some place where I can stay because that's if you cannot stay and you are always like this, it's not nice. So so. So now we are inside because the rain came and uh, it's a little bit wet. Yeah. So. Uh, you fr from a Portugal, you just take a boat, fix it, and start uh, sailing across Atlantic. Right. Tell me a little bit about this. How it how it was? It was difficult. Yeah. Uh, did you expect the same, or just a little bit more reality? So uh, it was uh, two friends of mine and me, and they arrived in the last month before we started sailing. So they arrived in November 2020. And then we had the December where we stayed in the marina and we still worked on the elect electrics and all the stuff. And uh, sometimes we went out for test sail, just checking how the boat is working. And then uh, on New Year's Eve, we set sails to Lanzarote in the Canary Islands. And uh, the new marina? Mm -hmm. Any new marina in yeah. Lanzarote? Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. I, it's I've a been really there. nice one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, there's a lot of spare parts because we figured out the boat <laughs> after the restoration. There's still like the small things that you have just to figure out when sailing. Yeah, like some small blocks and right. some something. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, the uh, generator from the engine uh, started smoking uh, on the trip, so we had to exchange this. And uh, so we had two more weeks of uh, good work in uh, Lanzarote, and uh, also the trip was a tough experience because we uh, had two days or three days with the uh, winds 40 to 45 knots uh -huh. to, the, to the bow of the boat. Ah, and just uh, up, you just, were uh, wind. Uh, yeah, it very is quite uh, steep, yeah. uh, steep waves, so we all got seasick. <laughs> <laughs> and a friend of mine we, uh, and I, we had to throw up. So two of us uh, were just two days sitting outside and every 15 minutes... Uh, yeah, vomiting, vomiting out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, but then in the, the third or fourth day, the weather got nicer and we were already thinking, oof, the Atlantic is really like that. All the work would no, it wasn't be just uh, unlocked, for nothing, so. uh -huh. because we cannot survive like uh, 21 days passage across the Atlantic if it's all day like this. It's not possible. But luckily the last, and then the last day was just perfect sailing and we all were like, oh, Thank God, okay, we can continue. We know now it's uh, possible uh, a bit uh, more relaxed as well. So then we had Lanzarote, the repairs, and then uh, we explored the island and uh, also La Palma. But now the volcano yeah, okay, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> destroying a lot, sadly. And from there we started aye, the aye, aye. crossing. How was the main passage? Nice. We had uh, the trade winds constant all the time. We were pretty late in the, the season, so we started then in February from the Canaries. Um, so the trade winds were strong and consistent, and we went not to the Caribbean, we went to French Guiana. So we had the uh, wind even more from behind. Ah, uh, okay. And I have uh, like two Genoas in the front uh -huh. that I put out with two poles. And so it was super easy going. We had the wind yes, rain yes, it's and, called it. Um, well, we called it Passat sails. Passat yeah. sails, right, the same. And um, once we had to take down the sails because we had a rip in the sail and had to uh, stitch it. But that was quite common. Yeah, that, were, that <laughs> would have been the only changes, more or less, in, uh, in the sail positions in uh, 18 days. So the passage to French Guiana took us 18 days. Oh, how many miles? 
I don't know exactly, 2,500? I don't know if it's possible. Or if it's, it's possible, yeah. It's more I less would have sounds. to look it up in the, in the long Because road. from, uh, from uh, Tenerife to Martinique, it's mm -hmm. uh, exactly 3,000. Yeah. But if you go just more south, it yeah. could be closer it's a, bit, a little it's bit. It's a bit less. Yeah. yeah. That's also why uh, people were like, well, I mean, 18 days to cross the Atlantic, that's fast, small Yeah, boat. it's fast, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we were fast. But average 500 of, less. Yeah, <laughs> we had an average of uh, 5.6 knots. It's That's very good quite speed. Good for it is a very size. good speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's for the size, I would say it is yeah. extremely fast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we probably would, we, uh, would have had to reef a bit uh, earlier sometimes, but uh, we liked it going phew, in the uh, surf uh -huh. on the waves. We liked it. So. Did you have many damages after crossing? No, not no. Really. So you, you prepare it well, but sales mm. it doesn't matter. So it's yeah. like uh, yeah. this, it's a thread yes. yeah. normally right. damaged yeah. by a UV. As you really uh, just or oh, I just rebuilt the boat more or less completely new before, and then uh, in Lanzarote we did a lot of work to the boat as well. Again, the boat was really good set up for the Atlantic uh, crossing. So nothing. Good preparation happened. is fifty percent of success. It's, it's it's like that. If uh, yeah, and small things can uh, cause uh, a lot of damage out at sea. Yeah, if so. not prepared, it's horrible. It could yeah. be horrible. Yeah. yeah. So uh, after that, you just sail a, a bit in the Caribbean. Right. Yeah. Another. Yeah, we arrived uh, from uh, Guyana and then went to Grenada. Uh -huh. And because we have been so late, um, and also the the price for the COVID tests have been uh, pretty high in this area. I decided to stay on the, in Grenada. So I spent three months in Grenada, um, three weeks with my friends who have been on the Atlantic crossing, and then they had to go back home. Mm -hmm. And then I stayed alone and did some works in the boat again. I hadn't had to paint the cockpit yet because I, we had to leave. Uh, so the cockpit was super messy and uh, I painted that and then I, uh, built um, a rooftop for catamaran with some friends to get a bit of uh, money for the side and um, so that was Grenada and from there I sailed to Curaçao uh -huh. in the ABC islands back to Bonaire to learn diving because her friends were saying oh it's so nice yes yes I also there. heard the diving yeah. is amazing there and I did a dive course there with another friend that I just uh, met in Grenada and she was doing the course to get a dive instructor and we uh, managed it so I could be her first student ah okay uh, this, this it good, was yeah. uh, <laughs> nice so I got my certificate in Bonaire and we did some really good diving in Bonaire and uh, from Bonaire I sailed to Panama uh huh. Where were you now? But uh, it was difficult or dangerous trip because it's close to some dangerous water, like uh, north of Colombia, Venezuela, yeah, yeah, and yeah. other. Um, I had some friends who uh, had a weather routing app, and we checked it a few times. And uh, as the wind was picking up a bit more away of the coast of ah, Colombia. Okay, that's safe. Yeah. I stayed uh, quite outside and also outside the counter current, what's coming from the coast of Panama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I uh, only had to, uh, so it took us five days from Bonaire, almost to Panama, 90 miles away from Panama. And everything started and then, work against you, and then uh, up current, up the, wind, yeah, out, up no, all no, the, the shit. wind just died. <laughs> yeah, only just, a, a few just, thunders without yeah. wind. Only yeah. rain and thunder. And current. And current against you. And with the weak engine, with uh, average speed of two and a half knots, it took oh, three days. Horrible. <laughs> three days for 90 miles. That's You do it in uh, less than one day normally. Yes, so, that's, that's um, hard. That was, <laughs> that's uh, hard life. <laughs> frustrating. Um, but yeah. What is your next plan? What do you expect to do in the closest future? In the close, so uh, closest, closest plans, that's uh, the plan for today, finding out what you want to do. And yeah, but I mean future. just a little yeah. bit in the future. Um, I want to continue my sailing or the circumnavigation. And so I you're going to Pacific. Right. And I want to stay in the sailing season. So at some somewhere in between now and March, I, we want, or I or we want to cross the canal in Panama and mm -hmm. go to Pacific side. And then in March, starting the trip to uh, French Polynesia. Uh -huh. Hopefully they are Will open. Be open. Yes, yes, we are waiting the same now we just uh, figured out with friends that they opened up again 
You have to apply. Now they have a lockdown again. Oh. <laughs> Shit, huh? <laughs> How old is your information? Minus two days. Yesterday. Old. <laughs> <laughs> they probably close okay. this for this I don't weekend know. I don't at know, least. But, uh, I don't but know. so the Whatever. situation changes every day. It's, and, uh, it's still five months ago. Yes, so. yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we will meet you in the Pacific because yeah, we, are, we have the same go. route. Can yeah. you show me your boat? I can. Okay. Yeah. yeah, at least I have some space, can cut some stuff on the table and uh, do things. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So uh, let's start from the uh, front Football. cabin. Okay. It's yours. Right. So as I said, I, I share the room with the sailors on the side. Uh -huh. And um, yeah. It's the shelves for the clothes and uh, yeah. Uh, everything. Yeah, yeah. I just sew like a lee cloth that I can uh, hide the sails more on the uh -huh. side, but it's not uh, yet completely finished. What does it hatch in the front? Uh, there's the anchor chain locker. Uh -huh. yeah. You have access only from yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's not stinky shit because... Uh, when I'm anchored a long time in the same place, I have to clean the chain before, yeah, because, because otherwise I get the, the fishy smell into my cabin. And that's yeah, not, th that's the question. <laughs> that's not nice. No, I have to clean the chain then. Yeah, you can just be careful. No, with the, I, I, I yeah, will okay. not do it. I like, uh, you know, everything made very like old school, but the yeah. materials is just... Nice. Forever. Yeah, we had to clean them. Uh, we spent hours and hours to clean all the small little parts, but then they are still uh, still working. And so um, that's a mass support. Yeah. And uh, over here it is uh, extra shelves. Yeah. Exactly. I like this tiny. Yeah. Windows close. Yeah, the catches. Yeah, very yeah, nice. So that's the galley. Right. So uh, what I like is really the big sink. It's taking a lot of uh, space. Uh -huh. But I have a board that I can uh, put here and also cut here. Uh -huh. But uh, usually we put all the dirty stuff over there and then we still have uh, things to brush our teeth or wash the hands. Um, a locker for all oh. the kitchen stuff. Uh -huh. um, I'm getting my water, salt water with this pump and the fresh water with the foot pump here so I can also get very little amounts at the time for whatever yeah, I want for to do. Clean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and that is a famous spirit stove. stove. Yeah, it's quite nice. So I have no gas bottles that can uh, cause any uh, gas leaks and damage to my uh, to myself and also it's it's small um, I have a little uh, thing uh, that I can use as an oven I would really recommend everyone on camping or so with this little piece I can use it like an oven and I make bread cakes or lasagna in it just goes on top and uh, like normal oven and then uh, I have everything to cook. Uh, what is the consumption of that spirit and uh, where do you fill it with, uh, with uh, fuel, you know? Mm -hmm. how, I can... how it works? Can you show me? Because yeah. no, uh, I'm sure that no many people really know yeah. how to use a spirit oven. So when I, I have to close everything and then I can, hopefully if it's not blocked, yeah, I can open this. And maybe you know this um, gasoline lighters. Yes. So also I just pure the alcohol into this and there's kind of a foamy stuff. Uh -huh. And I put half a liter or a liter in each. And uh, with one liter I can cook for three or four days with making coffee in between or some small stuff. Or making a bread once uh, one time and then three to four days one liter is okay. Okay, so uh, that's a head. Yeah. Is it manual? Yeah. Yeah, manual pump and only the head, no shower on this boat, because I have to uh, save my water. Therefore, I get the, the bucket and the ocean water. Uh huh. 
two benches you can sleep also depending right. on a on a right. tuck. So on the in the sea when I'm when we are sailing we take the spot out and put it here to the side so we cannot fall out of the bed. Ah, okay. And it's and it's more space. Yeah, and then it's also more space here. So it's actually the perfect size to sleep. Yes, when yes. Sailing. And the, over here it's it works. It's the same. The same. Yeah. Ah, okay, nice. So that's yeah. one lift. Put yeah. It, put it here. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, you have a map on a on the table. On the right. table. Yeah. It's a beautiful table. Huh? No, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, just made new. And uh, here uh, it's uh, Corsica. Okay. And on this side is the coast of Tunisia. It's um, just because I had the paper charts on the boat and that were the most prettiest one I found to put them on the table. Which kind and of navigation do you use? Uh, I mean, uh, paper chart, uh, electronic charts, mm -hmm. and uh, what exactly? Um, I have usually a paper chart for where you see the overall. So probably, or for example, the whole Atlantic, where yeah, I can yeah, make yeah. every day I make a point where I was at midday. But the rest of it, I go with uh, digital charts on the chart plotter, on the mobile phone, or on the, on the computer. You can use OpenCPN for free charts if you find some. Or on the chart plotter. Okay, so you just use a paper for a general plan. We do yeah. the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay, show me uh, aft cabin. Okay, let's go. Just put this here. Nope. So, the moment there's uh, Sufjan sleeping here. Um, yeah, a little bit of storage. Uh, a bed here where you can sleep. Um, uh huh. But it's okay. It's uh, it's yeah. enough space. You can you can sit and here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can if you want to get your pants on. You can stand up, <laughs> get the pants on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, here's a locker for personal belongings of the one who's sleeping there. Some stuff here and some uh, whatever is ending up in this locker is uh, sleeping there. Where is yeah. access to engine? So here's one access in the back and also to the um, cockpit drains. Uh -huh. um, so I can, uh, because they are big ones and I want to close them very easy. Mm -hmm. And then there's also access to the engine room from this side and from the front uh, where you have uh, seen the stairs. So you can get access from all so, around? Yeah, the three, s three sides. It's more than enough. Yeah, Sometimes it's, good. it's uh, even. Yeah, I have, uh, visit, like I have visited some boats where you're like, shit, I don't want to change anything. So I got the the chart plotter with uh, I connected to the AIS. Uh -huh. um, what's really nice, so I get a pre alarm from uh, coming uh, cargo ships, for example. The radar is in the middle. The gray thing, um, pretty old, but it's still kind of working. Uh, and uh, bad conditions, I use it sometimes. And um, yeah, up there you have the VHF and uh, the orange thing in the corner, that's a satellite phone. I, uh, I use it it's for- Iridium. Iridium, yeah, I use it to, yeah, just uh, getting some weather updates sometimes from family or friends who are doing the weather routing. Uh -huh. Or I also have a, like a live tracking I can, uh, I can put to my website and Family and friends can follow me where I'm at the moment, what boat speed I have. And, Are we um, using yellow brick? Yellow brick? Uh -huh. okay. It's the same, it looks the same. Yeah. <laughs> so now we are in a cockpit. Right, so um, I wouldn't call it the center cockpit, some people do, because uh, in the back yeah, there's another... Big, uh, back space with some windows. Yeah, and uh, yeah. There's, there's another cabin where now my friend Sofiane is sleeping. So... Um, yeah. Not like a locker room. <laughs> no. <laughs> close it and disappear. Like, just close him <laughs> then. <laughs> right, uh, Arias uh, not pilot. I think it's super old because uh, the shaft is already fixed several times and probably also 40 years. Um, but it's doing super good. I always have it when I'm sailing and uh, it's just uh, nice. It's uh, not uh, consuming any energy from the battery, so. I like it. You and have all safety equipment there as well? 
Yeah, um, life raft is uh, quite important. I think it's uh, more difficult to get the person that's overboard back into the boat, as I expect if he's not uh, moving anymore to get him up there. So I, I'm quite uh, happy with the line. Yeah. Uh huh. So uh, it's a manual winches here. Winches, yeah. All manual winches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have a not really big sail, so it's no. Quite it's easy uh, it's lift. easy. Also, sometimes I don't even need the winches to hoist the sail. What's uh, so you can lift nice. it with the hands. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Um, I haven't have all my sheets into the cockpit, so still for work in the sails, I have to go to the foredeck. Uh, um, let's go. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, Hoisting the main is working uh, from here. Um, basically everything, also hoisting the jib, if it's not already set. Um, I have a furling in Genoa. Um, uh, and this one is a bigger one that I really like because in, actually the sizes of the sails are quite small, and, but with that one, I can get some pressure. And uh, second four stay. That's a baby stay. Yeah, baby so stay, but that's, uh, that's uh, parking position. So usually it's when I use it, it's here. Uh, you could, could use it for a storm sail. Right, exactly. Uh, it's the inner yeah. four stage and yeah. the baby stage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's like exactly uh, like mine, so I yeah. the same in my Yeah, opinion. you can uh, get uh, good tension on it with that uh, thing. And it, it and is a more safe, because if you have uh, some problem with a four stay, you yeah. have an extra yeah. one which yeah. at least keep your mast yeah. up. And if you have, uh, if the furling system is blocking, and you cannot uh, get your sail in. You with that one, if you have the sail up, you just drop the line and the sail goes down. So it's yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. Um, what is it? Do you have a surfboard? Yeah, I have a surfboard. It's a uh, a bit too small. I tried it the last time in Grenada, and it wasn't um, that uh, successful actually. But it's maybe small for you. Just <laughs> it's it's too small. Yeah. Uh -huh, it's but uh, yeah, I'm not, it's also not a professional board. It was from river surfing in Munich. There's a standing wave in the in the yeah, river, yeah, yeah. and uh, we tried that uh, earlier when I was younger. But I was thinking uh, when I go around the world and I find some waves, I should take a board with nice. me. So that, that's uh, uh, pools. Yeah, two poles for when I go with the uh, the trade sails that they can put them out to the side and um, yeah so yeah manual uh, anchor anchor winch as well it's uh, the the workout that's horrible huh? <laughs> yeah that's a horrible uh, man all in my back <laughs> It's, no, a, it's yeah. a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a workout. You yeah. can uh, see, I have to see it as a workout, then it's uh, okay. Which anchor do you have, uh, I mean, in weight? In weight? Yeah. Oof. I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, I, when I bought it, I looked to the table and I took one bigger. So it's uh, quite a big anchor for the boat. Um, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so relatively big. Yeah. yeah. Okay, show me what do you have else. So that's, that's a hedge to to my, the V-berth, where usually I'm sleeping. Uh-huh, so you um, prefer uh, for front one? Yeah, when, I, when I'm on anchor or in, uh, somewhere, when I'm sailing, I usually sleep in the saloon or in the cockpit yes, outside. Yes, of course, because yeah. in the front cabin, it's, it's a little bit hard yeah, to sleep. Yeah, um, but uh, now with a friend on board, I'm sharing the space with the sails, so I have all the sails in the front. Uh, yeah, what else on the boat? I have some safety lines here. Um, that when I'm uh, walking on the deck in bad conditions, I can uh -huh. um, click myself and don't get lost. Hopefully. S <laughs> hopefully. Some spare fuel on the side. And um, How many fuel do you have on your boat? So in the tank I can carry 120 liters uh -huh. and 20 more liters in the orange uh, jerry can. Uh -huh. And the other ones are for the dinghy. Um, ah, some gasoline. Okay. Yeah, okay. How yeah. many miles can you pass on the uh, total amount of fuel on your boat? I mean, with a comfortable speed with your engine. Yeah, a comfortable speed, like I mean, <laughs> counter current. <laughs> no, 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 just in a flat Yeah, so when I go nothing. with uh, 1800 to 2000 RPMs, uh -huh. I uh, use 0 0.9 liters. So let's say 150 miles with the engine. Is it correct? Yeah. Maths? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah? Good. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah. But uh, I used, I just, until I reached Panama, I only refueled twice. 
Thank you very much for watching us. I hope his uh, experience is uh, extremely inspiring for everybody. And uh, please subscribe to his Instagram, to my YouTube channel. And he also has a blog, blog in, blog in a German language. But you can use a Google Translate or at least learn another one language. Because for <laughs> sailors, it's very yeah. common to speak many languages. Yeah. Danke schon. Gern geschehen. <laughs> so subscribe to all our media, all links in the description of this video and uh, tell some something to people and that's it probably. Yeah. Okay. So I have to tell something now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. First of all, thanks for, for having the interview with me. And uh, yeah, really, I hope uh, that more young people start uh, going sailing or exploring because it's I just learned so incredibly much and uh, it would be uh, just stay forever. The, the discover the, the, of this yeah. world is extremely yeah. fast way like yeah. this. Yeah. And uh, well, I experienced it's not always uh, easy peasy, not always uh, lying on the palm tree speech. Um, there's some crying on the boatyard as well. But also that's a part of the story and it um, uh, changes you and you, you just uh, learn from it. It's opposite side of coin because from one yeah. side you have that everything in yeah. a paradise, but on the other side you have to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you pay with uh, sweating and uh, tearing with your money as well, but um, yeah. So guys, thank you very much again for watching us. See you, I hope, very soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you.